Let's talk a little bit about uh, schools. Uh, our, this is our K through 12. Um, we know that schools are coming back uh, last week, this week. We know that they're working very closely uh, with their local, local health departments. Uh, we want to thank them for the great preparation uh, that's going into this, the collaboration between them and the local health department. Um, we want, I want to talk today about uh, an order that we will be issuing uh, to make sure uh, that the public is, in fact, informed about what is going on with the students in the school. Not by name, of course, but for the public to be able to understand uh, if there is, in fact, virus uh, in, in the school or if it's been associated with the school. Uh, prompt reporting to the public, to parents, uh, will help prevent a potential further spread among students and staff, and it will also let the public know what's going on. So we'll be issuing an order that requires schools to establish a reporting mechanism for parents to report cases. Uh, we know schools have attendance lines where you can call and say that your son or daughter is not going to be there. Uh, this is where parents report if their children are going to be absent for uh, whatever reason. Uh, this reporting mechanism could be that hotline if the schools want to use that as, as the hotline. That will be up to the schools. But parents need to be able to call into a school uh, and say that their, their child has maybe tested positive or whatever the situation is uh, with the child. Uh, within 48 hours after learning of a student or staff or a staff member who has tested positive, our schools will have to report that case to the local health department. Now, that, in some cases, the local health department will have already known about it, uh, but this is just to make sure, and so the schools will, as quickly as possible, report that information. Uh, within that same time period, schools will make the information about a positive test publicly available, and they can choose how to do that. They can put a press release out, uh, or they could post the information on the school district website, just some way so that the public is informed. Uh, schools will also notify parents or the guardian of the child in writing, uh, and they can do this um, by hard copy, or, or they, could, they could do it uh, with, a, with a text, or they could do it with an email. Um, talk about, tell them about this, and include as much information as possible, obviously without disclosing protected health information. Um, Reporting illness to parents and guardians is nothing new for schools. Um, they do it. Uh, there's head lice in school. Uh, you get, you know, if Mrs. So-and-so uh, -so or Mr. So-and-so's class has the head lice, you know, you get the report. So this, this is nothing new, and this will not be unusual. Uh, the health department will then notify the, Ohio, the local health department, will then notify uh, the Ohio Department of Health uh, on a weekly basis about uh, reported cases. So that will go to the state at least once a week from the local health department. And the local and our state health department will then put that information up. Um, we just feel that the more information that is available out there, the better. And let me just maybe state the obvious. Um, if a community has widespread or has spread, and every community has some spread um, of the COVID, that will be reflected in the school. So the fact that a school uh, has reports that there is COVID in the school or a student or a faculty member uh, or someone who works there, uh, the fact that that gets reported should not necessarily cause any great alarm. Um, again, the schools are going to reflect what is in, in the community. So this is just a way of let people know, but uh, does not mean at all that the school has done anything wrong. Um, you know. And the conversations I've had with superintendents and all the information I can gather, it looks like to me schools are doing the best job they can. Uh, those schools that are open uh, or that are on a hybrid system, uh, they're doing the best job that they can on sanitation, keeping students apart, uh, wearing face masks, and doing all the things that they, they need to do. So you can do all those things, and uh, you can still have COVID in the school. And, and the real key uh, we've known all along, uh, is how we handle it, uh, how the school handles it, how the local health department handles it, how the parents handle it. So this really is a team effort. It's going to take everybody involved, 
and the better information that can come into that school, better information that can come to that local health department, we're going to be able to manage this better. They're going to be able to manage that better. And our school has a much better chance of being able to stay open. So literally, this is a team effort. It's going to take everybody in the community working. And if you don't have a child in school, uh, you can still can contribute. And that's wear a mask out in public uh, and be careful um, so that we keep the spread down as much as we can.